The Northwest Mounties Megabots Robotics Team. We have uh, two of the student robotics team members. We have Drive Captain and Overall Build Leader, Lucas Fuchs, and District Robotics Student Coordinator, Aiden Baker, along with their coach, Troy Wancha. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and uh, congratulations because something exciting happens next week. What's that? Um, we go down to Houston for the Worldwide Championship. The World Championships. <laughs> wow. How cool is that? Yeah, that, that's awesome. So what does Drive Captain uh, mean, Lucas? So what I do is I kind of coordinate with the other teams that we are working with at the time. So I coordinate with them, kind of come up with an idea of what we're going to do on the field, what we're going to do to score points, and what we're going to do to defend against the other team. What grade are you in? I am at currently a senior. Oh, how exciting. Because this is the first time the Megabots have been in, have made it uh, to the playoffs and the state championship. Yes. Oh, awesome. So, Aiden, how did you get to states? So what set us over was this award that we won, and we won the Imagery Award. And how we won that is connecting our team to the um, first core values. So our robot's name is Wayne. I mean, it stands for We Are Your New Energy, which we have new coaches, uh, new mentors, just a lot of fresh energy on our team. And with that award, we won five ranking points, which was what we ended up needing to qualify for states. You won an award for the name? For the name, our uh, community outreach, um, and sharing kind of what FIRST is about to our school and community. Troy, you're pretty excited about uh, your team and oh, yeah. everyone on it. Yep, so I'm, I'm new to this team. It's first year as coach, okay? Um, but I'm not really new to the program. As a matter of fact, all these kids, most of the kids on the team, I coach their uh, middle school teams. So I've been with these kids since they were sixth graders. Aiden and I have been together since he was a sixth grader. So um, they lost their head coach last year, and I decided to take over and, and take up the coaching position at Northwest. Uh, it's been a great year. You know, I've... I've been to the um, state championships with the team that I was on before seven times and never made the playoffs at mm -hmm. states. So this was the first time for me that I ever made the playoffs at states, which was amazing. And then in the end, we did well enough to actually qualify for the world championships. So um, yeah, I'm super proud of these guys. I have key people in leadership roles. Uh, we've got a student head programmer, a student head designer. Uh, Lucas was our drive captain and overall build. Um, Aiden does a lot of things behind the scenes. He coordinates all of our business. He coordinated our whole awards program this year, which is the first time I think you guys did a strategic awards program and they got an award for it. So yeah, it was a great year. Well, let's meet Wayne. We have uh, a video that you brought along. Let's take a look.
Wow, very impressive. And really, to me, it's amazing how far robotics has uh, progressed, how much faster they move, how much more nimble they are. It's, it's really been uh, an evolution in uh, school robotics. And you work on these, like, right up until, well, even when you're on the competition floor, you had, at the States, you're in an Airbnb, and you were putting the robot together. Tell me about that. So when we went to States, we were out in Saginaw. We rented an Airbnb. And because of that, we were like, we decided to, dis sorry, we decided to get some work done on the robot while we were there. It was the night before. Um, we got the robot out of, the, out of our trailer, got some tools in. And then we realized that uh, the door wasn't big enough to fit the entire robot in. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually ended up just assembling the robot outside. I thought you were going to tell me you took the door off the hinges. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up taking the robot apart outside, bringing it inside, and uh, working on it there, kind of like buttoning stuff up before we went. And it ended up uh, paying off because... Yeah, there, there was a key thing that they wanted to finish so that our human player who puts the cubes and the, the cones onto the field um, would have a better idea of what part that we need other than using hand signals. So these guys were up till two in the morning putting LED strips down the front of the robot so they could make a blue or yellow for a cube or a cone. And, uh, you know, it was a very inspiring moment for me. You know, these guys, instead of just screwing around and playing phone games or whatever, they were working on the robot right up until the last minute. It's great. Robotics team members don't get a lot of sleep uh, during the season, do they? No. 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 Now, we've got another video of you guys working. Aiden, uh, tell us about uh, the video we're going to take a look at now. Um, so this is about three weeks into our build season. Uh, and just kind of shares about what had gotten done in just a short three weeks of time. All right, let's take a look. For the past three weeks, Mountie Megabots has been planning. Placing three in a row gives us a link, and that gives us an extra five points. Yeah. Designing. So it goes up. Building yeah. prototypes, programming, testing, okay. and building their robot. Now this shaft goes on top of there. What will this season bring? That's what grease is for. Will our plans work out? Will they take us to the next level of competition? We will see in the upcoming season. You know how to do this, young lady? Well, I know how to hold it and do it sometimes, but I don't. So for the last three weeks, we have been building stuff that we're going to need for this season, one of which is this test robot that we have. So this is sort of to help us practice with other robots on the field. Now I went around and helped uh, program our Rio and our radio and helped configure our Spark motor, Spark Maxes that we have on here. This is going to be our competition bot. This is the uh, custom made swerve drive base. All of, our, all of our electrical panels are under here. It was designed by Ethan. So this here is going to flip down the disc and then pick up our cones. So our claws can grab it and pick it up vertically to put them on the, on the goals. This is our CNC and we've got a lot of robot parts for it this year. So our programming goals for this season are to get odometry and pathfinding fully worked in the robot so that we're able to move the robot to a predetermined path on the field without having to do anything time-based. And then once we get that down, we're going to attempt to track the robot's position on the field based off of April tag. So then we can figure out the robot's actual position on the field. So this is our test uh, stand, which we use to place the robot on top of, and it allows us to tilt the robot back and forth and test gyroscopic sensors. And the reason we did this is so that we can create 
the code for the charge station for our auto balancing. One of our goals this year was to get organized and all of our wonderful mentors helped us to accomplish that. Sticking out here though. It's not gonna clear it. Right, it won't clear it. Well, I'm saying this will go. But look, right now you're not gonna clear it. It's going like. I'm telling you. Yeah, they did it. sticking out. Oh, there, it won't clear it. We shouldn't have anything sticking out. That's what we just said. That's what we said. Oh, you asked if there was? Yeah, yeah. if anything was going to stick out, and you said yes. Oh, I said it shouldn't hit. Okay. I guess well, it might. You're good there's, then. There's two different things. Shouldn't hit and not sticking out. Are two uh, so this year we decided to do a, oh, it'll be fine, a double reverse four bar. So chain goes from this motor to this gear, that gear, all the way up there. This is our prototype. Once we get this working, we'll build our real one. It took a lot of putting it together and taking it apart to figure out how grippy these wheels should be or how it should work. Okay, so the idea for this was the, our grabber would connect the end of this so we can pick up game pieces off the floor. It's amazing, there's so much that goes in, into this. A lot of prep and a lot of, what, where do you get the space? What, what a beautiful facility to be able to build your robot. Where so is that? That is at Troy's, employed by AccuBuilt. And so that's his day job, and that is where we built the robot because uh, there wasn't enough room at the school. So we went off campus and built all of that at AccuBuilt. And then when it was finished built, we took it out to Innovate Albion. Uh, which is where they have a full-size practice field, so the programmers and drive team are able to work mm -hmm. on it there. So, Troy, uh, local um, business uh, and industry and manufacturing contribute a lot to the success of not just the Megabots, but all the robotics. Absolutely. They look at it as a, a program to help, you know, feed the employee base at Jackson. So, a lot of manufacturing companies, a lot of automation companies in Jackson, if they support this program, <clears throat> it helps them it's because as coaches and stuff, we're starting to develop these kids' skills mm -hmm. to come work for them in the future. So they see it as, a, as an investment. Aiden, uh, programming this year in the, uh, the scouting app, what can you tell me about that? So at every competition we have to scout, which is where we have people in the stands watching the matches, getting data. So for alliance selection, we look at that data to make our best selections for other teams to partner with. It's counterintelligence. Yeah, <laughs> but this year, usually we do it on paper, but after Spring Arbor, one of our programmers was like, why aren't we doing this on iPads? So he programmed an app that we were able just to use the iPad rather than paper and keep track of paper. Well, we actually, you mentioned Spring Arbor, that was the, uh, the regional competition that was held right here at Spring Arbor University and JTV caught up with uh, some of the team there. Let's take a look.
very cool. Uh, now Ethan wants to join us. Uh, Ethan's dad is Troy, who was just sitting in that seat, the coach, and Ethan came along to be in the audience with uh, the Megabots. And um, how cool is it to have your dad as your uh, robotics coach, Ethan? Uh, it's pretty cool. So my dad has been doing robotics for a really long time before I was even in it. And when I started out at Northwest, he wasn't really a part of it there. He wasn't like a coach or anything. And he slowly got more involved, so it's really cool to work nice. with him. What year are you at Northwest? I'm a junior this year. And Aiden, what are you? I'm a sophomore. Senior. Senior. All right. Now, uh, you guys brought some uh, photos. So uh, tell us, uh, as we look at the shots, tell us a little bit about what we're looking at. That is us working on the robot after it broke, I believe. They do, they do tend to break. Yep. It's just it's expected, isn't it? Yep, all about prototyping phases, and that mm -hmm. was one of them. And you guys, uh, the spirit of cooperation among other teams is what's been amazing to me. If someone comes over and says, hey, you, got, you guys got a such and such? Yeah. Yep, we usually offer it up along with our programmers sometimes. Where's this? Um, that is a picture that we took of us sitting in the stands at States last weekend. So that's our field that we were on right there in front of us. And these uh, packed houses. Oh, it's packed. Yeah. Uh, that is us at Lakeview uh, during a practice match where we were balanced on the charging station. That's, so it's uh, all electric, all battery. Yeah. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and those look like robotic pancakes. Yeah, this they is are. Lucas's mom making breakfast uh, last weekend at States. It's like camping, isn't it? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Now, people that are into robotics, so what's your background? Like, you know, when you're in middle school or elementary school, were you like um, big into gaming or, or, or what was it that got you interested in, in this? Uh, we'll ask Lucas first. Um, what really got me into robotics was uh, the eagerness to kind of figure out how things worked and mm -hmm. how to build things from the ground up, how uh, things were manufactured, how things are prototyped, everything that went into it. So that's really what I kind of got. Mm -hmm. That's what attracted me to robotics. Yeah, it makes sense. Aiden, what about you? Uh, well, uh, when I originally joined robotics in sixth grade, I wanted to do programming. Um, but then I got involved in the business stuff, and that was a lot more interesting than... And Ethan, your dad helped get you in, into it. What else? Yeah, so my family was involved for it for a really long time, like as long as I can remember. So. I just kind of like followed and then I found it very interesting. I like the do the designing aspect of it. So like figure out what we're going to build and how we're going to build it. So everybody has their, their specific job on a, on a team. Correct. They're a specialist essentially, right? Yep. Now to get to Texas, where in Texas is, uh, is Worlds? Houston. Houston. Okay, so it's going to cost uh, money to get you all down there. So we're doing fundraising right now, right? Yes. All right, how, how can people contribute? How can they help? What, what um, do you need? So on the Northwest Schools website, under the announcements portion, which is on the right side, there is a link that says Mountie Megabots Fundraiser. And that is a link to the eFunds, which is where people can donate and help support the team. And you need, you gotta raise like 25 grand? $25,000. And when do, when do you go? Uh, we will be leaving next week, either Monday or Tuesday. Oh, so we got to hurry. Yeah. Get that money in. Are you going? Cause how do you get the thing down there and everything? Um, a family's taking the trailer down there. There's so. a team trailer? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how long will you be down there? A week. A week? Yeah. How many, like, is there different levels to advance? Is it like um, a basketball tournament? So or? it's set up similar to the... Uh, events like states and the two that we went to to at Spring Arbor and Lakeview but we'll start off with qualification matches which is where every team plays 12 matches yeah. and then they will move on to alliance selection which is where the top eight teams will pick four or three other teams to join or to partner with them to play in the playoffs 
then after that, there's the final matches between all of the fields. Oh, wow. And you could come back with some sort of a, a world championship trophy? Yeah, blue banner. That's the goal, right? Of course. Now, do any of you have an interest in as, as a future uh, robotics in, in any industry? Yeah. Yeah? You gotta decide, you're graduating this year. What are, yeah. you, gonna do? What are you gonna do next year? Um, I'm gonna pursue a degree in mechanical engineering. And hopefully with that, I'll be able to kind of like work around my schedule and come back and help out robotics again. Oh, that'd be awesome. And you guys, you got a little time before you have to decide. Yeah. Well, I'm sure AccuBuilt and other manufacturers are looking to uh, find their next uh, pool of uh, talent right here in the uh, robotics teams. Make sure you get uh, details to us on how you guys are doing down in Houston, and we wish you the best. Thank you. So if you want to help the uh, robotics team from Northwest get to the World Championships in Houston, visit the Northwest Community Schools website and look for this a picture of the Megabots and help support them on their trip to Texas. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. You. Uh, thanks to Coach Troy Wancha and Robotics Megabots team members, Aiden Baker, Lucas Fuchs, and Ethan Wancha.